and we're here to have a look at what remains of the big building there with the three arches. You can look later, you have to listen first. I'm just being bossy, sorry. <laughs> because what we have got there is one third, because that is all that is left, of the Basilica of Maxentius. Now we've heard of Maxentius already today. Who killed him? Constantine, I love it when people listen. Okay, but even though Maxentius was a bit of a tyrant, he did something really good here, because this was to be the last, the largest, and by far the most important basilica architecturally in the whole of eight Rome. Now why is there only a third left? In the 7th century AD, there was an earthquake and the whole of the magnificent roof fell down. And for me that was a tragedy, because this is the one building I wish was still standing. But if you think, in the 7th century, the Roman Empire had already fallen. There was nobody looking after this fantastic site. And so what happened was maybe one of the first exampling, examples of recycling, because the commoners, the plebeians, or the plebs, if you come from Liverpool, they would come, they would take the bricks, the stones, and they would use them to build their own houses. Now the commoners didn't live up here on the hill, they had to live way over the other side in an area called the Subborough, where the word suburbs comes from, over in the region that is now Via Cavour. And the whole of the Subborough was separated from here by a great wall because of the number of fires that used to spread across to the Forum. And we're going to hear more about fires a little bit later on. But the reason I think that this is so important is that it is really well documented that Raphael came and studied the ruins here, that Michelangelo came and studied the ruins here, and so did the great architect Bramante. And it was Bramante that Pope Julius II, in 1508, asked to pull down the old basilica of St. Peter's and build a new one. And Bramante actually wrote, my plan for St. Peter's Basilica is the Basilica of Maxentius with the dome of the Pantheon on top. And that is pretty much what we've got today in St. Peter's Square. So the legacy of this building from 308 is still with us here today. Now as a little side note, in those days the basilicas had nothing to do with religion. It was the pagan temples that were the centres for religion. The basilicas were just where the normal activities of the marketplace would take place if it was cold or if it was raining. And in fact, St. Peter's Basilica is not a basilica at all. It's a church. And the only reason it's called a basilica is because of its architectural similarity to the Basilica of Maxentius there. Because there used to be eight huge pillars supporting the vaulted nave. But by the 17th century, there was only one left. And popes being popes, Pope Paul decided he wanted it. So he got a team of 60 horses and he transported it all the way to the square of Santa Maria Maggiore in Via Cavour. And it's still there today. And if you get a chance to see it, you will get some idea of just how vast that vaulted nave used to be and that was the first time it had been done anywhere in Rome. Okay, for our next stop, we're gonna have a little murder mystery tour. Is that okay? Everyone with me? Okay, this way.